Hi, welcome to Transform Life Church. In a few moments, we'll be joining the service already in progress. If you're joining us for the first time, I'm glad that you're here with us. I pray that today's message will be a great blessing to you. So don't go anywhere. I'll be back in a moment to share some next steps. Come on, let God know you love him. Thank him for his presence. Thank him for his love. You may be seated. God is amazing. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, worshipers. Pastor Joan, I love you so much. Love Pastor Dwight. I miss him. I miss him. I miss him. But it's really good to share with you this morning. Second service, I believe, is the blessed service because my wife entered the building. So you are indeed specially blessed indeed. But it's good to have my wife here. And my girls just, they, they love it here. So they run gone to children ministry without my prompting. So the Holy Spirit is already moving. <laughs> but I want to speak to you uh, on elevation. Amen. And I want to just give a quick backdrop to the story that was read earlier. Um, it was about Joseph. And what happened with Joseph is that he was very loved by his father and very special. He was treated a little better than the others. Anybody know a sibling that's treated like the favorite? Anybody? Now, if you don't know somebody who's treated like the favorite, it either means you're an only child or you are the favorite. All right? <laughs> so here is Joseph. He's treated specially by his father. His brothers got jealous and like really jealous. So much so that they plot to kill him. The Bible said they threw him in a pit. Then they said, why just throw him in a pit when you can't make money off him, right? So they took him out the pit and sold him into slavery. And here is Joseph. He's now in slavery and, you know, he tried his best to honor God. And then they told a lie on him and then they put him in prison. And even in prison, he honored God again. And as he honored God, what God did for him is that God stirred up the gifts in him. And I want you to know, the, the scripture says in Proverbs 18, verse 16, it says, A man's gift makes room for him. Thank the Lord, I know the scripture. <laughs> and bring it him before great men. And what happens is that when you connect with God, the one who made you, he put giftings on the inside of you. When you really think about your life, you realize there are some things that come easy for you that aren't easy for everybody else. There are some things that you just do naturally. And somebody says, if you can't think of anything you do naturally and easily or any gift or talent that you have, that simply means that you are a leader. So the Lord gives you the ability to lead and you have to now pull giftings out of others to accomplish the task that you must accomplish. So for those who say, I don't have no gift, well, lead away. <laughs> So here it is that God put some giftings in us. And firstly, I want to make the first point that you have to connect with him to know the fullness of what is inside of you. If you are not in relationship with God, no matter how successful you think you are, there is more for you. All right? I love iPhones. And, uh, you know, a pastor once said that he have an apostolic ministry. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and so... You know, you, you may, even if you love iPhones and you use it every day, I'm telling you, there are some features that if you carry it to the manufacturer, carry it to those who made it, they will show you some things that will make your life better that you don't even know about yet. And the truth is, that's what it, it is with God. Until you are in relationship with him, you will never fully actualize all the giftings on the inside of you because he put some stuff in you. In fact, he says that, you are his battle axe. He has made you the answer for every issue out in the world. You are his weapon of choice. When he thinks about how to defeat all the things happening in the world that are against him, he thinks about you because he knows what's on the inside of you. And so here is Joseph who God has given the spirit of wisdom and the spirit to interpret dreams. And he is now, no, no, in. Uh, slavery, and the Bible says that he honored God by serving with excellence. So much so that he was promoted to chief slave. I mean, if you must be in slavery, you might just be chief slave, right? <laughs> if you must. And he's now promoted to chief slave and he's honoring God. And as he connects to God, God starts to show him some things on the inside of him. And when your gifts are shown, 
people will naturally elevate you. you. When you honor God and he starts to bring out some things on the inside of you. I mean, I don't think Joseph planned on being a slave. <laughs> but when he honored God, in his, even though he was in a tough position, God started to show him the excellence in him. That he can serve and serve well. And, and great, a great man like a Potiphar now elevated him. Now, a lot of us, when we are in a journey with God, and things don't work out how you think it's supposed to work out, we all of a sudden want to lose connection with him. You know, The Bible says, Potiphar's wife lied on Joseph and got Joseph into prison. But he continued his relationship with God. And as, as he continued his relationship with God, God showed, stirred the gift again of uh, interpreting dreams. And he honored God with his gift. And he kept, you know, just keep his connection with God. And as his gift was continually before him and he used it, he had an opportunity to use his gift for Pharaoh. Many of us here, there are gifts that you have. And I want you to look at your sermon notes and I want you to write this down. Write under Proverbs 18, 16. That the gifts that God has put in me. You see, my wife is laughing. I shared a joke in first service. That when I first came here, I saw Pastor Dwight just kind of, you know, going through the sermon notes. I thought it was brilliant, right? But that's, I, I just couldn't do it. So I, when we set it up now and I said, I'm going to do it this Sunday, you know, I'm, I felt like I made it in life. <laughs> I'm going to use sermon notes today. <laughs> I joke with Abby that when I do it for the first time, and I did it in first service, I'm going to turn around and say, you know, turn to your sermon notes. Hey. <laughs> so, your gifts are given to you so that great people will elevate you. He gives you your gift that when you begin to work in it and understand it, People, I want you to get that. Don't miss that point. People will begin to elevate you. They will say, oh, what a good gift you have. Nobody can do this like you. You are so, you know, fast. Not, not fast in people business, like run. You, are so, you, you know, you are so, you're such a wonderful singer. You are, you know, a, a great accountant. And people start to elevate you and open doors for you because of your gift. All right? So, but... God wants to pull out these treasures so that people can see it and be blessed by it. Because when they are blessed by it, they begin to put you, lift you up. But the scripture says this in Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see. So that everyone will praise your heavenly father. So your gifts elevate you. But your good deeds bring glory to God. Ah, let me try that again. Your gifts will make people just be in awe of you. But your good deeds will leave people in awe of God. And so what God does is that he gives us gifts so people can lift us up. But when we are up there, it is to show forth his good deeds. Oh, Jesus. So he wants to lift people up to show the world his love and his power by his spirit. You are able to do good works and people are glorified and, and God is glorified. Sorry. So let me just use this example. If any normal person help an old lady across the street, you know, it, it doesn't go viral. People don't like, oh, you know, talk about it. In fact, you might have somebody in the road blowing them. Hurry up and walk up, man, you know. <laughs> But if a celebrity, I used the example earlier, if Rihanna or Beyonce carries an old lady across the street, everybody takes pictures and video it and it goes all around the world. 12 million views. And then they say, oh, it's so good to take care of people. We must love everybody and we must serve everybody. You know, why does it go viral with her? Because men have elevated her. So whatever good deed she does, it is more accepted. All right? So when you as a believer, you are elevated by your gift and then you do good deeds, they will begin to glorify the God that lifts you up. 
And so God is, he's saying to the church, I want to elevate you. I gave you gifts so that you could be elevated. But when you get there, I need you to, to do good deeds by my spirit so that the world can glorify me. That's how I get the glory. So here is uh, Joseph. And what happened with Joseph is that now his second in command is in Egypt. Only the Pharaoh is greater than him. And he has this big success story. In this day and age, he could write a few books and make some money. Coming from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> you know? But here he, here he is with such great power and influence and authority. And his brothers who sold him into slavery comes to Egypt. Because there's a famine in the world and only Egypt has food because of the wisdom that God gave to Joseph. And so Joseph now, he forgives his brothers. And he tells them, don't feel bad. Because God allowed you to, put, to sell me just so I could preserve your life. That means... If Joseph did not show the love of God when he was elevated, the whole point of being elevated wouldn't work. It wouldn't have come to pass. Because the point of elevating you is to show love to the people that did you bad. I elevated you so that you could show back love to the family that cut you off. And so God is saying to us this morning, I am lifting you up. And the young people, and not just the young people, but the whole church, I said it earlier, I don't want to jump too far in the message yet, but I said it earlier, as a church, you guys just celebrated, what, seven years? And you've accomplished a lot for a church of seven years. And so God is elevating you and giving you influence and giving you power, but it is to show forth his good deeds. Not just to say, oh, you know, I go to the Transform Life Church, you know, praise the Lord. <laughs> yes, man. Yes, yes. Sir. It is to know with your influence because now people trust you and people know that you do things well. Then they come to you. You can now serve them and show the spirit of God. Hallelujah. So I want you to write under Matthew 5, 16. Listen, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> when I lift God up, in my place of elevation, uh, scratch, lift God up and put, do good deeds. Sorry, it's my first time. Don't, don't forgive me. <laughs> when I do good deeds in my place of elevation, my Father in heaven is glorified. So I want to look at this. In Galatians 5, 22 to 23, it speaks about the fruit of the Spirit. Now, I'm not no English major, but this thing bothered me. It says, the fruit of the Spirit, yet it lists nine things. The fruit of the Spirit is like that. You know. So it lists some things. It says, it says, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So this is the th these are the things that God is trying to bear in you. He used the words fruit for a reason. He's trying to cultivate that in you, the fruit of the Spirit. But what we need to understand is that the fruit of the Spirit that He's trying to cultivate in you, so that is what you're supposed to show people when you're elevated, is love. Full stop. I never make a mistake. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Because when you turn to 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7, you realize that the Bible lists love. In 1 Corinthians 4-7, love is patient. Love is kind. And when you look at all the listings of love, it's the same thing that comes in Galatians 5. So the fruit of the Spirit is really love. I need you to get this. So I want you to turn to your sermon notes again and you see them side by side. You see Galatians 5 and uh, 1 Corinthians 13. And this is what I want you to do because when God is elevating you, he wants the world to see his love. He wants the world. His spirit is bearing love in you. 
So that when he lifts you up, they can come in contact with his love. And then what they do? They glorify your heavenly father. So I want you to do something with me so that you can see this clearly. We're going to look at the fruits of the spirit on your left side. Galatians 5, right? And then we're going to kind of match them just to see that they're all there. Um, even if they expressed a little differently. And, and, then, and then some. So the fruit of the Spirit is love. And this is this whole 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7 defines love. So that's covered in everything. It says joy. Just take a pen and draw a line from joy and put it down to, but rejoices with the truth. Because love rejoices in truth. It brings joy. Peace. Just draw a line down to it is not easily angered. Somebody say, praise the Lord. I'm a peaceful person. I am not easily angered. I don't stir up trouble. I don't go around vexy, vexy, nor do I uh, push others to become angry. I don't say to people, I should have me. Mm, glory to God. If I didn't me them do it too, I would have. You are right, you know, you are right. You can't go on like you. You are Christian. They're going to push you over. If I didn't... No, no, no. We are peacemakers. We bring peace. So it's not easily angered. Patience. So you see it at the top, on the other side. Love is patient. Kind. Again, love is kind. So you cannot draw, draw those. Very straightforward. Goodness. You cannot draw a line down. You will see where it says, Love does not delight in evil. Guys, love, do, it does not take pleasure in something bad happening. I'll give two quick examples. My young people, praise the Lord, I did a survey some time ago among my own young people. I asked a quick question. We had about over 80 young people there in the room. And we said, if you were at the bus stop and an old woman was walking by you and she tripped and fell, how many people would laugh? And I thank God for their honesty, but boy, the amount of hands go up. <laughs> because we have a culture that we delight in bad things happening. That's not love. Amen? So it also says uh, faithfulness. One version just says faith. So you put a line to always trust. It says gentleness, which also another version put it as meekness. So you can draw a line to it is not proud or you could even put it to it does not boast. All right? And self-control. I am not self-seeking. I am not trying to please myself. So if myself want it done this way, if you offend me, I just lash out because I don't feel good. And you shouldn't. That's not how I operate. So self-control. You can draw a line up to it is not self-seeking. I'm not trying to gratify myself and my feelings. I am looking out for the interests of others. So you see where... Love, the fruit of the Spirit is love. Why you have to get this? Because a lot of us are battling with bearing, with showing the world what God wants us to show. And we don't have no patience with nobody. And you say, Pastor, pray for me. I'm working on my patience. It's not a patience issue you have. You have a love issue. It's because you don't love your sister enough. You cannot be patient. It's because you don't love your boss enough. How God wants you to love your boss. You cannot take the time to just take my time. I'll, I'll repeat. I'll do it over. I'll be paid. So it's not a, a kindness issue you have. It's a love issue. It's not a self-control issue that you have. The reason you're not controlling yourself and controlling all members of your body, praise the Lord, church, is because you don't love the other person enough. To say, I will never lead you into sin. I will never do anything to dishonor your body. And for those who are dishonoring their own body, you don't love yourself enough. I won't elaborate too much. The children are in the room. <laughs> so, it, so you need to understand, when God elevates you, he wants you to show the world his love. That's how he gets glory. The, the, the giftings in you give glory to yourself. Make rooms for you. Make room for you. It causes great people to say, listen, you can do this well. I need you in my company. I need you where I am. I need you to be at this position. But when you get there like Joseph and you're faced with adversity and you're faced with people that treat you bad and you pour out God's love on them, God gets the glory. So here it says in 1 Timothy 4.12, 
Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. I think some young people should say praise the Lord. If you did not say praise the Lord by your own admission, you're old. <laughs> Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and purity. So he's saying, the youth... I want you to be an example in what real love looks like. A lot of times as young people, and there's a culture now, where it is the, it's an in thing to throw shade. No, if you don't understand it, the culture pass you, my friend. <laughs> it's a, there's a culture now where it is cool to just clap back at people and be disrespectful. It, it is just, but God says, no, 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 no. We don't submit to that culture as young people. You, you are to be examples in love. Because if you know why God would want to elevate you, if you understand that the purpose of being elevated is to show love, it's the quicker God can just lift you up. Because he said, this one has been practicing it. Joseph did it right in Potiphar's house as a slave. He did it right in the prison, you know, as a prisoner. So I can put him in Pharaoh's house and make him the governor of all. Because I know the same love that kept him there. He will show it and I will get the glory. And so God is saying, young people, it's your time to be an example in love. So I go back to the church and that you're seven years. There are churches that are a hundred years old or more. There are churches that are much older than you. But God says, I'm looking at the youth in you. I'm looking at the fact that I elevated you in such a quick space of time. I gave you influence in such a quick space of time. Now I need you with that influence to show love. Don't go say, why are we only just seven years, you know? Make the other one them do it. He says, as a church, I want you to show love. So I realized that you guys are actually going out to serve a home soon. So I expect that everybody, praise the Lord, the amens are roaring, <laughs> will go out to show what love really looks like. To show how, because that is how God is glorified. He loves to give you a big house, big care, all these things. But that's not how he gets glory. Help me, Holy Spirit. Because even Jesus, I want you to see this. Even Jesus, when he died on the cross, which is the greatest act of love, no greater love than a man than this, that he will lay down his life for a friend. But he didn't lay down his life for his friends because he said, we were enemies. So he took it even another step, calling us friends when we called him enemy. And he said, after he died and rose again, he declared, now all authority is given to me. So he said, when you are able to operate in love, you will be elevated to places of authority that you never dream you could be. Because God knows he will get the glory from your life. The higher up you go is the more people will trust your word, trust what you do, trust what you say, want to mimic you. So if he brings you up and you are not imitating his love, you will lead many astray. He wants people to love like he loves. Whew. So I want you to make those notes under First Timothy. It is your, it, it's necessary. So even if you don't think you're a part of the youth, you're a part of a young church. Praise the Lord. <laughs> if Pastor Dwight was here, I would trouble him and say, even if you don't think you're young, you have a young wife. So put yourself, put yourself in the... <laughs> and say, because I am a part of a young movement that God has elevated, I must be an example of what true love looks like. It is on me to show the world. And my friend, if you are old and you're not showing love, you have to go catch up. <laughs> there are ways. God wants to lift us up. And he has lifted up many of us. But we have not given him back the glory by showing his love. And so because we have not given him back the glory, I tell you this. Even in ministry, if you see people, and just in the world, people who were lifted up. If they operate shady, if they don't operate in integrity, if you do things that you're not supposed to do, you will lose your influence. You will lose your elevation. But if you operate from a place of love and you do what God asks us to do in 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7, you will go even higher. 
That is what he wants from us. So let us do this. I want to look back on 1 Corinthians 13 because it tells us what we must do because everybody has our own definition of love. <laughs> so if we are loving people, we must be what? Patient. Kind. Not just when you feel like. Not if them smile nice. It says it does not envy. You know, a lot of us feel that we are loving people till we really look at the scripture <laughs> and see what love is. It's not a feeling in your stomach when your heart flip, when you see somebody, when she looks at you. In your heart, that, no, that's not love. That's more than likely yes. <laughs> but love is patient and kind. It does not envy. Guess what it doesn't do? It does not boast. If you are boasting and lording your position over people, you are not walking in love. It is not proud. If you, if you treat people like you are better than them, you are not walking in love. It does not dishonor others, guys. And I said this in, before and I want to just say it for you guys again. Because I know this is not this church. What I'm about to say is for other churches because we are alive. And they may be tuning in. I know this church don't do that. But there's culture in other churches where they dishonor their leadership. Where they don't treat their people in church, their own Christian mothers and sisters. They don't treat them with love. They treat them with contempt. They dishonor them. You can't tell me where for park. Oh, glory to God. You can't tell me. We're going to go to a church that, listen, not this one, but another church where... The front seats, you know, are hard and you have so many overflow. Other churches, not. You can't tell me where to sit down. You know who I am. But this says, love don't dishonor others. I hope I'm getting through to somebody. So, I tell you all the time, I follow you guys on social media. I follow the messages. And I, I saw Pastor Dwight speaking on margins. And he talked about marriages last week. And this one says, love is not self-seeking. If you are married, or even if you aspire to be married, you have to learn this one. Because I love my spouse, I am more interested in their well-being than my own. Oh, Jesus, help me. So some people say, I'm not about I'm married again. <laughs> but the... It is more interested in you. Because if in marriage, both people are more interested in the other's well-being, you'll have a happy life. But that's what love is. When I say I love you, it means I will be more into your interests. So if your wife asks you to get up in the night to help with the young baby, <laughs> you do fan her off and kiss your teeth. And say, I just come in from preaching. <laughs> you say, I am more interested in your well-being. Oh, Jesus. I will not look over that side. I will keep my eyes fixed on the Lord. It is not easily angered. That is what God wants from us when we are elevated. That's how he wants us to operate when we are elevated. We are not easily angered. Everything bad away. Everything just tick we off. You come to church to raise your hand. The breeze blow too hard. You have to sit down. <laughs> because all of a sudden I'm riled up. I'm not easily angered. You, you can't press my button. It says... <laughs> After I read this one, I'm just going to rush through the rest because this one alone just. <laughs> it keeps no record of wrongs. Oh, praise the Lord. Any husband wants to praise the Lord? Is that... I'm not saying praise the Lord. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> it keeps no record of wrongs. You don't treat people because of what they did last week and last year. That is not how God operates. And that's not what he wants from you when he elevates you. I want to say this again. If you understand the reason that God wants to elevate you, and you walk in it, it is easy for him to quickly elevate you. It is easy for him. And I believe that just as how Joseph was in prison, and prison wasn't strong enough to kill his gift, 
to make him elevated. Whatever circumstance you are in, no matter how hard it looks, no matter how deep it looks, that if you can understand that God just wants somebody to reflect his love in the earth, that he will elevate you. Your purpose and your gift will find you even in the depths of jail and bring you out before great men and great women. Just be ready to lavish the world with love. I, I, help me Jesus John was on the Isle of Patmos they put him there because for him to die a, desert, a deserted island and he was left to die but in that tough circumstance, the Spirit of the Lord said to him, come up here. I feel like God is calling to you this morning, come up higher. Even though it seems as if weights are tied to you, he wants to lift you up in this moment. He's just asking that you will be steadfast to love. Because a lot of us want to see our names in light. We want everybody to talk about how great we are. But that's not why God is elevating us. He's elevating you so that they will see your good works. And he will get the glory. It's your father's pleasure to lift you up. It's your father's pleasure to elevate you. But he wants you to take pleasure in showing love to the world. Come on, man. Tell the person beside you. It's time to be examples in love. Christians should be the most loving people in the world. There shouldn't be any other place that they can go to to find love. If anybody lacks love, they should run to the nearest church. In fact, I want us to put our hands together for, I, I don't know what you, greeters, that's what we call them here, eh? ushers, that meet us at the door, that meet seats us. They are very loving. The first time I came here, I was like, wow, I feel the love. Then I started to wonder it's because I'm a special guest. But my friends that, I, that came after, and even those that went to the overflow, spoke of how well they were greeted and the love that they felt. When you are leaders in love, you will be the first to be promoted. When you build a culture of loving people, you will be the first to be lifted up. And so when we say, God, elevate us, I don't want us to start to, yes, I'm going to get this and I'm going to be that. And I want us to start to say, I am ready to love like how God loves. As I come to a close, I want to say this for those who struggle with loving people. A big reason you struggle with loving people is because you struggle to receive God's love. 1 John 4, 18, I believe, says we love because he first loved us. You have to first receive his love to be able to love. And some of us struggle with loving, but the biggest revelation I've gotten from 1 Corinthians 13 isn't that we must love this way. It is that God is love. So if this is what love is, that's how God loves me. He keeps no record of my wrongs. He, 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 delight, he does not delight in evil. A lot of times some bad stuff happens to us and we blame God. But he takes no delight in them. But he rejoices in truth. That's how he feels about you. He always protects. He always trusts you even when you mess it up. He always hopes and he always perseveres. He's patient with you. He's kind. He him don't envy you. Him, he's not boastful. He's not proud. Though God have every reason to be proud. He will not dishonor you. And when you realize these truths about love, you will understand. Oh, let me drop this one. God is love. Therefore, he's not easily angered. Oh, Jesus. I'll let that one just soak in. So he's saying, that is the love I have for you. Receive it so that you can be free to love others. He needs an army to lift up that will declare his love to the world in our action, in our deeds, in how we operate. Thank you, Lord. Let me share this quick example. I just want to get it. I don't, it's not to point out any good thing or any, any great thing that I have done or how I raised children, you know. 
But it was amazing. <clears throat> Two things with my eldest daughter. When I was in an accident um, some years ago, and the car that we had then was down. She, she slipped through the accident. She didn't wake up to reach home. The car couldn't even drive. And she said, first thing she said, when she realized what happened, Daddy, how are, how are the people, because I live on a hill, you know, how are the people that don't drive going to get off the hill now? Who's going to carry them? And it's because she saw something that we would do routinely in helping others that said to her, this is how we must operate. And another thing that she said, and I don't even want to take credit for it as a parent because I'm like, she's nicer than me. <laughs> because she said this, she said, we need to feed the homeless people. Not something I've done, but she's too young to remember. She said, we need to get food for them. And she sat us down, and we had to discuss with her a plan. I'm, I'm, Marvin, that we will buy a bottle of water, and she said, we must put a fruit too. And she said, orange. She said, fruits and a snack, so that when a homeless person asks, we can give. That's the type of example we have to show the world. We have to be leaders in love. So this morning as the worship team comes, I want to pray for us that we will be leaders in love. Those are the people that God elevates. Those are the people that God honors. Those are the people that God wants to promote. That shine his love to the world. Jesus. I want to pray that for you. Can we just stand? Come on, if this word really connects with you, just give God a praise. Just give God a praise, man. Thank you. Thank you. I hear the Holy Spirit saying there are a couple truck stars here. You do well in trucks at your school. He says, I've given you a place of influence so that you can show his love to the world. He says, Doesn't, don't fall in the trap of others that use it to pump themselves up and hold themselves in higher regard than others. But serve those who are not cool or who are not popular and show his love. Because if you can show God's love in that area, he can promote you to even higher things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just sing this song and then I pray for you and then we'll just give a final instruction. Hi again. I hope that today's message was an inspiration to you. I pray that you'd experience God's best in your life. If you made a first time decision for Jesus today, I encourage you to get involved in a local Bible-believing church. Also, drop us a line at info at hetransforms.me and I'll send you our book. First Steps for the New Believer. It is free of cost. Additionally, if you are in the Kingston and Metropolitan area, feel free to come and join us on Sundays. You can check our website for further details. God bless you real good.